Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Yes, risen indeed. Hallelujah. You know, we have an awesome, sure hope because we have a risen Savior. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, it would be foolish to come here, wouldn't it, this morning? But we have a hope that we have a risen Savior, and because of that, we know we are one day that our bodies will be raised from the dead. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. The dawn shines with radiance of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with you forever in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Acts 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good things and healing all who were <clears throat> oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to those of us who <clears throat> were witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 26. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all of us die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits then at the coming of those who belong at the, his coming those who belong to Christ then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power for the for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet the last enemy to be destroyed is death the word of the Lord.
gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out, and they went toward the tomb, and the two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in, saw the linen wrappings lying there, but did not go in. And Simon Peter came following him, went into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. And the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in. And when he saw, and and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. And then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood uh, weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb. She saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid laid him. When she said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, he said, uh, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to my father, to the Father, but go tell my brothers and say to them, I am sending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What a day, huh? I didn't even know that it was kind of rainy outside because um, it sure isn't rainy in here. <laughs> Someone gave me some, some uh, um, I, maybe this is a hint, a little gum. So <laughs> but then little Gianna, four years old, was baptized in that baptismal font not, uh, a couple weeks ago. She gave me this little picture. Isn't this great? It's a little boat. David, can I see? Yep, you can certainly see it. She gave me this little boat. Cool. Isn't that cool? And she said, I said, do you think it'll sail? And she said, if you cut it out, I think it will. (laughs) Oh, if we had the faith of a child, huh? If we had the faith of a child. Jesus said to the disciples, he said, uh, he explained to them what would take place. He would be, uh, they thought he would be just the king of Israel, and they bidded for uh, who was the greatest among them, who would be uh, in the place of honor in his new kingdom. Jesus says in Mark, who do people say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? And Peter, Simon Peter spoke up. He said, you are the Messiah. Sternly ordered them not to tell anyone. And then he began to teach what would take place that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, be killed in three days, rise again. He said this all quite openly. And then Peter took him aside and he rebuked him. And Jesus said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for you're not setting your mind on divine things, but on human things. What are you looking for? What are you looking for this morning? We all look for different things, don't we? I mean, that's what life is about. It's about diversions in life. We're always running about too many things to do, too many little projects to get done. And in some ways, it's useful because it keeps us busy and occupied. But 
sometimes we get lost in what's really important. We look for different things. We look for acceptance and love and honor, respect for genuine, real understanding. I remember when I was a kid, I was in um, seventh grade, and I'd walk down the hallway, and I'd, uh, they'd say, uh, good morning, and I'd say, good morning, and they'd say, how are you doing? And everyone would always say, fine. They didn't always feel fine, you know? So I, I tried it one day. Someone said, how are you doing? I said, pretty bad. And they said, oh, OK, good. Thanks. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> We're preoccupied with so many different things that kind of take up our time, and we lose track of what's really important in life. I went to a movie recently. It's called Risen. It's about uh, the, the life of a, uh, of a Roman military tribune, uh, Clavius, his name is. And in some senses, this, this story is about all of our stories. He's, uh, he's charged with knowing, uh, making certain that Jesus dies on the cross and then making certain that his, his body is safe. And on Sunday morning, when his body is gone, Pilate calls him, calls him to his house and tells him what's taken place. Pilate is worried about an uprising. And the Jews are worried about peace. And so um, he confides at one point in someone uh, what he's truly looking for. He said uh, he was looking for an end to travail, to work, a certainty, a peace, a day without death, he said. There's a sense of Roman peace, which is Pax Romana, that is, it comes by the sword to keep peace. They would put people to death and keep people in fear. And then there is a peace of Christ, the Pax Christus, or Christi, which comes in trusting and love, a peace that passes understanding. And that's what he finds. When he searches for Jesus, he doesn't find them. He finds the disciples, and there he, he sees Jesus with them teaching once again, and he's overwhelmed, and he sits down, and he listens, and he follows him all, all the way, he, he's, uh, he disappears. Now, here's the amazing thing about this story. I may imagine that you were a disciple of Jesus, and he said, I'll show myself, I'm, I'm going to rise after three days, and you, he shows himself to you, and then he disappears, and they do what any disciple would do. They, they call out Yeshua. They say, Jesus, Jesus, where are you? They feel abandoned once again, and they say, you know, we're supposed to go to Galilee. It's there that we'll see him again. And sure enough, uh, this Roman soldier goes with them to Galilee. And it's there where they encounter Jesus again, and he teaches so that they might understand what the gospel is truly about. And in, that, in the midst of that, he, he explains to him that he had come so that they might have life. Jesus is sitting with this Roman soldier on a hill at night. And he says, what are you looking for? And this Roman soldier says, a day without death, he said. And then Jesus tells him things that he couldn't have known. And about he's that he's searching for peace, an end to war. See, this is, the, this is the amazing thing about Christ. It doesn't matter how many times you hear the gospel, it comes to us fresh each and every time. It speaks to us exactly where we're at. It says, what we're lacking, I have. What Christ has given is, is beyond measure, and his words are, are eternal. And, and even though we're looking for different things in life, he gives us a peace that passes all understanding. And, in the midst of a, a world that searched for hope, for compassion, for a place where we might know who we are, for something that is eternal instead of just transient. Huh? Have you ever gone to work and thought, what difference does this make? You know, I stock shelves or I jackhammer or I, you know, I, I crunch numbers, but what difference does it really make? I sell parts. They always break, huh? The difference is, is what Christ has done in our lives. It's, it's realizing that what he has done has changed the way that we look at the whole world. Blaise Pascal talks about diversion. He says, if man were happy, then 
then he would be less diverted. Uh, the less diverted he would be, the happier he would be. He would be like the saints of God. Yet we're not happy, so we're always looking for something different. When we're working on one project, we think about something else. Actually, he says when we work, we think about not working. And when we're not working, we think about working. Our whole life is filled with diversion. The only place that I found people ever find peace is in Christ. And I don't know how many bedsides myself and pastor have been by when what they wanted was peace. All they needed to hear was that they are forgiven. That's what Christ has done for us. And yet we search, don't we? So Kari and I were uh, at the airport, or tr trying to get to the airport in San Francisco. And I was driving. It was early in the morning, but I wanted to make sure to get there. I'm always uh, very task-oriented, so my job was just to get to the airport. That was it. She was the navigator, and unfortunately, she had forgot her, her phone at home. And I had forgot my TomTom -tom at home, so we had this map, this huge map that was supposed to tell us how to get the airport, you know? And so um, I said, well, the, airpo the airport's right over there. That's where we're going. And, and um, I said, now, what, uh, what exit do you take? And she didn't, uh, she didn't have that quite yet, so I just took an exit. And 15 minutes later, I found myself in the same exact spot. <laughs> Unbelievable. And so... <laughs> So, uh, which gave us a little time so she could look it up. And then she said, well, you take this exit. And I, so I took that exit, 15 minutes later, ended up in the same spot. You know? <laughs> Finally, I looked at the, the tower. I said, that's where we want to go. <laughs> we don't have much time. And we got there. We got there. Husband and wife went skydiving. They were going to go skydiving. True story. And uh, they could see the tower where it was, and they, uh, so they, they were at, they just couldn't find the entrance. And they, they went to the west to try to find the entrance, they couldn't find it. They went to the north to try to find the entrance, they couldn't find it. East and south again, they ended up in the same spot where they started, and then they found that it was right there where they had started. Isn't that the way our lives are? We're preoccupied with so many different things, we're diverted by so many different things in our lives, and yet where we often find ourselves starting is where the answer is. So Mary is standing outside the tomb, and she's looking for the body of Jesus. Where have they laid him? And the two angels said, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said, They have taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. But Jesus says, Why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? All she did was turn around. She said, if you, sir, if you know where they have carried him away, tell me so that I may take him away. And Jesus explained everything in one word, said Mary. He spoke to her heart, unraveled all the mysteries that Christ had, had spoken of so many years earlier. And in that one word, everything made sense. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're four years old and you can draw a boat because if you just cut it out, it can take you anywhere, huh? Here's the beauty, though. Christ is risen, and in that is our hope. It's Dietrich Bonhoeffer that wrote in his uh, book, Ethics, a life is not justified by love or hope but only by faith. For indeed, faith alone sets itself upon a new foundation, and this new foundation alone that justifies our being to live before God, that foundation is the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith means being found in life upon a foundation that's outside of myself, that upon an eternal and holy foundation upon Christ. Faith is a passive submission, an action, a submission alone to what Christ has to do in our lives. It's realizing that in the forgiveness of sins, he makes us new each and every day, each and every time we come to him. It's there that we find life. 
It's there that we find direction in our lives, no matter how old you are. It's the one to whom we go, and we find a peace that passes all understanding. It's there that he guides us so that we might know the way home. Huh? So, I was, uh, I was flying uh, one other time. I had gone to see my brother, my little brother in D.C., and, uh, and I was down there, and uh, a storm came in, and I couldn't take uh, the flight out of the normal airport. I had to go to Dulles International Airport, and I was flying on standby, which is kind of nice because they can upgrade you, and it doesn't cost anything. It's really neat. So uh, I thought that was pretty slick, and I had to get back to Chicago because I was preaching on Saturday and Sunday to about a, um, 750 people, and I thought, well, I better get back, otherwise I'll be in trouble, you know. And uh, I went to the, uh, the airport, Dulles International Airport. I said, well, I need to go to Chicago, and the flight attendant wrote down something on the on the ticket and she handed it to me she said get on this bus go over there and then just sit there quietly because you can't ask any questions if you do you can take uh, these privileges can be taken away which the woman that uh, gave me uh, those uh, vouchers said so I, I did that I went there went to the airport sat down there weren't too many people waiting in the line I but I couldn't help myself I got up and I said you know is there any room on the flight can I possibly get on she said you know you're supposed to go sit down and not ask any questions. <laughs> so I did that. <laughs> and I waited. And finally, uh, she called my name, and I went forward, and she said, uh, we, have, uh, we can bump you up. It's business class all the way. I said, well, that's pretty nice. And, uh, and I had noticed that it said London Heathrow over the, over the ticket uh, booth, but I, I thought, you know, they're going to Chicago. They're based in Chicago. It'll be fine. But I got on the plane, and, and I listened to all the announcements. And uh, first they, they did it in English, and then they did it in French. And the French, they're not accurate about anything, so I didn't listen. <laughs> then they uh, did it in Dutch, and I don't understand Dutch. Well, they do. I mean, have you ever studied French? They're all over the place. <laughs> Dutch, I did not understand du Dutch, but then they spoke in German. and. Germans are very precise, and they didn't mention Chicago. <laughs> I was really in trouble. <laughs> and we were already taxiing down the runway. <laughs> so we got airborne, and I thought, well, I should probably tell them, and, they, and I knew they'd just tell me to sit down. So I sat there and waited until we leveled out, and then I talked to the flight attendant, and I said, you know, I said, I... I are we going to London Heathrow or Chicago? <laughs> she said, well, we're going to London Heathrow. And I said, well, uh, I said, uh, I was going to Chicago. <laughs> she said, you're not now. <laughs> she said, you seem really calm. And I said, well, yeah. I said, you're not going to turn the plane around, are you? She said, no, we're not going to do that. And I said, and you're not letting me out here to swim backstroke back, are you? <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. So I'll tell you the truth. She said, well, can I get you something? And I said, you know, you can get me anything. Make it a double. <laughs> <laughs> How does God work in our lives? Two weeks earlier, I had chosen a, a sermon title, and it was, it was actually about Jesus uh, asking, who do people say that I am? You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And I, the sermon title was Without Question. That was the problem. See, I got on that plane without question. Hymn of the day, 747. <laughs> 102-year-old woman passed away this week, Carolyn Powers. And you know what she said? She said, life happens when you make plans. Life happens when you make plans. Does it change your life that Christ rose from the dead? That he sees you as his child, that he calls you his own, that he has forgiven you, that he is, you are adopted into his family, that you are his own, and there's nothing that's going to change it? In any situation in life, do you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt? That's the hope that we have in Christ.
whether you're 102 years old or 50, or whether you are only a little child that's four years old and can draw a boat that can go anywhere in the world, huh? It's a hope that lives today. Lo, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. Isn't that great news? He is risen. What are you looking for? Why do you search for the living among the dead? He is risen and everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sins through his name. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Receive the benediction. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you his body and his blood, may he keep you under true, in true faith under eternal life. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks.